I. So we get. I don't suggest to charge like this, um, unless there obviously is something behind the Rhine. So he charged with the phone booth being behind. For one, he's not in disc um, at all. Uh, he's away from his team. He's overextended. So my main tank pretty much just uh, punished him for that. Uh, so it was a great charge, but generally you don't want to charge. Uh, so this, I know our main tanks here. This is really important. I will get on you when I see a charge that is all the way to the back here. This is bad. You do not want to do that. Why? Because you're the anchor of the entire team. This shield is huge. When you go and charge randomly into the back line, you give up all of this space. So your entire back line is vulnerable when you charge. So rarely ever charge until you know you can get something like this, where the the um, the terrain is very close, uh, and or maybe even here at the max. But you don't want to overextend all the way into their backline. For one, you're putting yourself in a bad position, and also you're making your you're, you're letting your backline just get destroyed at that point. Um, so yeah, the double whammy of feeding and just making your backline and making it really difficult for your backline. Instead, you now he's shielding up. He's probably going to walk back. He's going to sustain. And we're going to look to push. So this is why it's important as Ryan to hold your shield up. Because you get sustained and then you look, you, the rest of your team can take care of it. I won't go too much into a bunch of detail um, and a bunch of like, you know, footage. Uh, I'll kind of just uh, touch on a, a couple different uh, areas. So I think maybe I'll do second point and then after that, I'll um, probably move on to like spam uh, double shield so you can kind of get a, a better understanding of that comp. Is this helping anybody, by the way, of just like uh, what a general brawl should look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Okay. Perfect. Um, and me hopefully explaining it does does a little bit more. So obviously we need somebody back on the on the um, the cart. I don't That's a necessarily lot of space. Yes, yes. Um, so this is good. I, what I tell my team is I, every team I've ever coached doesn't matter what SR push at as hard as you can until they start to push back. Right. So take all of this space. And then once your the enemy team starts to push back, either with resources or an alt resources being, you know, like DM or um, or Ryan, you know, fire strike or you know just regular cooldowns and resources. Once they start to push back and give a little bit of resistance, slowly start giving it up to the point where once the cart pushes, now we can start to fight. So say Diva gets it to somewhere around here. You guys have slowly backed up to somewhere around here, and then we look to play around this corner. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So then you've kind of given yourself the ability to hold as much space as possible and take as much space away. Because if you guys were all sitting back here on cart, you would be moving slowly, and your engagement would probably happen somewhere around this general area. And you don't really want that. You want to take as much space as possible, maybe even this corner if you can. If you guys push up this far, and now that we're high nooning here, if we get a pick here, this is huge, right? We get a we get a pick. That means we've taken this corner as well. We probably even can play into this corner at that point. Does that kind of make sense for you guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that this is how you take a, the max amount of space and just be a bulldog. I mean, just be a vicious, vicious team, and especially at a lower SR that you guys play with. Whew. When you, if you guys were to adopt this style and play this aggressive and proactively, you're going to dominate teams. I mean, absolutely dominate teams. Um, so yeah, this is this is uh, pretty much textbook of how you how you keep aggression. You take aggression and then you keep aggression. Look at that wow. double kill. So now we're just playing super. We're gonna we're gonna chase him into spawn. I mean, that's how aggressive we are. Okay, now we back off. Okay, we're good. Let's get a couple on cart to push it a little faster. Okay, now we have what ultimate's coming up. Okay, this is... Who's who's our shot caller? Is our shot caller in here? Or is somebody who would generally take shot calling over? Um, yeah. yeah. That would, that would be me. Yeah. That would be you? Okay, yeah. so Jack. 
um, this is a great opportunity to get you some solid coaching as well. So uh, I'm already going to assume, um, but if you do this, fantastic. So when the engagement's over, something like this, um, shoot, I would even say uh, somewhere along. Let's go back a little further. Okay, somewhere along here. We've gotten the double double kill. We're running back. So now we should start thinking, uh, this is how you're, you should be shot calling. Okay, they have they're they're close to shatter. Um, they're close to window. Yeah, they don't have tracking. anything else, right? Alt tracking, perfect. And then now we have our window. What are we gonna do with it? Okay, we're gonna look to play. Uh, we're probably gonna look to window here. We're gonna look to be aggressive right as they get to somewhere around here. We're gonna look to window and be aggressive and take this corner. Something like that, like where you tell the and you tell your team what ultimates you're gonna use. Uh, where you're going to use them and how you're going to use them. Okay, so those are the three key points in shot calling, <clears throat> and they have to. You have to have that substance because if you just say what else we're going to use, that doesn't really like it helps for sure. It definitely helps, but that doesn't tell you where we're going to use it. It doesn't tell us how we're going to use it. Are we going to use it reactively? Or are we going to use it proactively? Um, and we we do know the difference of reactive and proactive, right? No, uh, reactive is just uh, using it when the enemy uses so it's just reacting to the alts, and then proactive is yep. engaging with those first. Exactly, exactly. So like beating a sigil, right? That would be a reactive uh, ultimate. Now, windowing to take space. So as the team pushes up, we window right here even to be as aggressive as possible and hold this space while our diva pushes up. That's another option as well. That's an example of being proactive. So you, so the enemy team is going to say, okay, guys, we need to do X and Y. Well, if we are proactive and we look to just stomp on them before they can even take the space and or before they can even enact their plans, that is what proactive, that's the, that's the, the quality of what proactive can do for your team. Um, and that's that's the result, I guess, of what proactive can do for your team. So being proactive in Brawl, extremely important. Uh, okay, let's watch this out a little bit. Okay, now that we have window, I'm assuming that we're going to play around window, which is, um, this is something also I haven't told you guys. Just our, off or just our main tank is here, correct? Jack, what are you again? Are you are you DPS as well? I am DPS, yes. Okay, so two DPS and a tank. Um, <clears throat> and, and this is good for the DPS to, to kind of understand too. So as a brawl, we want to be looking for corners. Corners, corners, corners. As the main tank, you should be stabilizing on one of these corners and planning around one of these corners as you are engaging. So you should have the discipline to say, okay, we have X amount of space. We need to play on this corner and defend this corner, play up here, do not allow them to take this corner. Why? Because if they can use this corner and use it as a disc location, use it as a point to spam you guys out, right, with with enemy uh, window at the same time, that's gonna hinder us. So we do not wanna give this corner up, we wanna push out of this corner. So, so as they're coming up here, we wanna look to probably window it. So then they can't own this corner, they can't use it as a disc location to sustain and save it for their, their um, team. We took that away by being proactive. So, um, yeah, corners, always great, because obviously that's like an infinite shield for your main tank, right? Like, you always want to play around corners. Like, be as disciplined as possible with playing around corners. Uh, so, so that goes, you know, obviously with every corner in King's Row. King's, cor King's Row is heavily dependent on corners. Heavily dependent on corners. Um, and you should be playing around them at almost every engagement. You should never walk out past the corner and engage somewhere around here, unless you have ultimates that kind of make sense, right? If you're playing, you start around the corner, but if you have May alt, sure, chuck it somewhere around like here, and then look to push past the corner. That's, that's perfectly fine. But to start an engagement out in the middle of nowhere, like say here, not a good idea. You do not want to do that. And I think even uh, in solo queue, um, Jay, you will probably excel quite a bit by just generally playing around corners a lot more. The best tanks in Overwatch, um, even in an Owl, the difference between Owl and Contenders is Owl tanks just understand how to not take damage better. That that is seriously like what makes a great tank 
is that actually relieves the pressure off of your backline. So if your backline has to heal you less, that means their backline can shoot the enemy team more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you're relieving pressure off of your backline, allowing them to be more aggressive, which then puts them on the back on the back foot because now our, their enemy BAP can no longer apply pressure. He has to sit here and spam on the Ryan because the Ryan's taking too much damage. Look at the Ryan now. He's already he's holding his shield up for kind of no reason. They haven't even pushed out yet. Their team, well, their team is about to push out. Uh, but this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine too. Uh, well, let's say someone is like way back here. Let's say two people are like right back here. And you're just holding your shield out, taking massive amounts of damage for no reason. And then when your team's here, you just start walking out and getting just bombarded with more damage. Your shield goes down and everybody dies. So make sure you're holding on to your resources until your team's ready to cohesively push out. And then you're looking to tech to capitalize, okay? Okay, so exactly what I said. We played around corner. It's a decent may wall to to ne negate our um our our uh, window. By the way, if you're playing may, I don't know. Do you have may players here? I I'm a very flexible DPS, so yes. Perfect. Um, so yeah, we should always be kind of looking to may wall the bap window, uh, to kind of negate uh the the bap window's damage for the most part, or at least allow your team to either take the corner or back off. Uh, away from the window. Which I'm sure you probably knew this, but I just want to make sure that's always kind of happening. Or at least a thought. Okay. That was well played by the enemy team. So can you kind of see what the enemy team did uh, in, in response to our team? Why they were kind of successful? Play it one more time. Okay, they may wall off our window. Can you see why they were more successful? They rushed past the uh, the window, so their window was useful. However, um, Team One's window was not as useful. It was until it was may walled, right? And I, I feel like it was an okay window. Um, but I don't feel like we played a, as aggressive as we should have. I think we all should have pushed past here and probably used this as a window. Um, but either way, yes, exactly. Like, they pushed out. They did a great job by maywalling off our BAP window and doing this. And then they laid their own window down. And then what did they do? They played the corner. And also, now what are we stuck in? A long alleyway with no sustain, right? They owned the corner. They played more aggressive than we did, and we gave up the corner when we shouldn't have. So that's this is the value of playing on a corner and owning that corner and playing more aggressive because then it creates an area where we cannot escape. We'd have to get over here or back over here. So this is there's three kind of different uh, areas where you kind of want to think about is a corner to alley. So this is a corner to alley, uh, a corner to corner, which is obviously like, and the corner to alley is uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I can press buttons. Um, corner is here. Obviously, the alley is long here, right? That's an optimal spot where you want to look to disc window. Um, the, another example is a corner to corner. So obvious, like putting a, a, a BAP window here is less optimal because there's less space that it'll be uh, effective comparatively to this area here, right? Um, and then there's a corner to corner to open space. Um, and this would be the corner to corner to kind of open space here. Lots of open space. Uh, to, to utilize here, you have to be kind of careful because putting a disc win uh, or a BAP window here can be good, but then they would just, all, all they would have to do is go here and or here and easily sustain through that window. So thinking a little bit more of your window locations is going to be fantastic. Um, who did we add here? Terminator, what is Terminator play? I, I'm tanking DPS. So off tank? Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, so now that we kind of identified the weaknesses, this is good that you guys are already kind of picking up uh, where they went wrong. 
By the way, Terminator, we are looking at my Collegiate team because we don't have any VODs for you guys. Um, this is a 4-4-ish game, 4-3-ish game. Um, and yeah, we're just kind of, I'm going over the fundamentals of Brawl. Thank you. Okay, now they push aggressively. Uh, okay, they didn't, weren't as aggressive, but they still take as much space as they can. And where do, where are they doing? You see how they're pl how they're playing? Yeah. Should they, how are they playing? Shouldn't they hold the choke uh, or the corner in the front? But here, yeah, right there. Why don't they? Or is that what you asked? Yeah, shouldn't they? Um. And then I know I like the, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah I like so, teammate because... is going on the left side. If they rotate, they could always rotate back. I do agree with this for a couple reasons. We we are playing around our strength, right? Which is May. Uh, the Diva could be here. The or the Ryan could be there. Diva could be here. Let's see, May here, and then you have your Bap and your Cree. So those are, and then obviously, who else are we missing? Lucio. Lucio could be with the core as well. Um, you're playing your Bap and your McCree here because you're looking for sightlines in poke. Uh, and you play the rest of the core here because you're looking to play off of the the, the choke. Obviously, you're looking for a May wall, then you guys could kind of rush in. The Bap could play at his optimal like range and or, and or poke. Um, Cree could he wants to close the distance though he can maybe start out here but closing the distance is important because you want to be an optimal flashbang range uh at the end of the fight or during the brawl should i say uh so closing the distance is, is going to be the optimal move um you could even start here if you really felt more comfortable so it would be just bat back here uh bat wants to have the space doesn't want to get cleaved anyways doesn't want to have to like deal with a shatter any of that there's really no reason for him to be up here he could push up a little bit for his shift value but that's really about it <clears throat> so yes i do agree they should be playing up here and that's kind of why you would want to play up here if we had a spam your comp let's say like soldier or you know kree soldier or um I don't know, Ash Soldier or Ash Cree, something like that, then we would generally want to play a little bit further back because playing here with no May, pretty pointless. We're not playing for holding the choke or playing for spam damage at that point. Um, yeah, and I can go further into Doom comps and stuff like that and how to set up all of that, but that could be um, maybe in a. I feel like I should explain understanding kill boxes and stuff though. Um, I don't know if we play Doom on this map. I'll see uh, if we do. Hey, we pretty much rolled the. Oh yeah, that part. <laughs> Look at this, guys. This looks pretty funny. Our Lucio's a dummy. He emotes and he can't stop. He can't stop emoting. He's like spamming and he can't stop it. And everybody just look at everybody. They just shaking their head like you dummy. Everybody just stops like, oh, my God, that just happened. <laughs> Anyways, you can see the discipline when Lucio comes back. We all engage properly. We all engage together with our resources and push out collectively you see how that how that is i mean this is clockwork this is exactly textbook fundamental overwatch and engaging and making sure everybody's together we push out together uh, lucio obviously is down here uh, would have been optimal for lucio to be up here but either way he's going to meet them we push out we got the may so we by the wall we got the may to expend her ice cool or her i or whatever her her shift is right that's a resource that's valuable. If we get the May, if we pick the May from here, this is huge. So this was actually a pretty good May wall. It would have been optimal if we got Ryan in it too, but either way, this allows us to take a lot of space. And now the May is forced to counter a wall, which her, now her wall is not going to be very really useful at all because we're just going to push around it. Okay. We beat it. Not a great bomb. That's okay. I don't think Robin expected any, but I thought I thought, or I I'm thinking the players thought like since the May alt was here that they were gonna push aggression onto it, so that's why the diva ended up like bombing here. Um, so it's not an awful call, but I just think she didn't know. Okay, now all we have is shatter here. 
So we can look to play a little slow um, because they own the corner. We have to look to play a little slow, probably around high noon. We tried to get the shatter off here. Probably, I don't think it worked um, or did it. I'm not sure. I don't think it does. Okay. Yeah, it actually gets the diva. So then that allows us to push up because now we can uh, look to probably high noon or something like that. But it, it allows it allowed us to take space. That was a good Ooh, charge. Oh, huge shatter. That was gigantic shatter. Yeah. That gave us all of the... Or gave it all to them. Gigantic shatter. Okay. Man, I thought that the second point's a little longer than I thought it was going to be. Okay. That was a great window because it would actually played into their sight line because we don't have a lot of great sustain spots, right? We have one back here and then one way up here, right? Like this is a pretty good window because it doesn't allow them to do much. Yes, we walled and we tried to push up, um, but let's see how they do. It's going to make it really hard for our back line to rotate. Okay, our Diva DM'd. Whew, that was really close. We got really lucky. Okay, yep, that's what I figured. We do end up winning this, but I think we had a harder time. I'm not a big fan of this rotation, by the way, so I don't think you guys should take it. Okay. Yeah, they went main anyways. Not a great window either, but we dealt with we we worked with it. Okay. Anybody have any questions about how you should play Brawl on Kings or just Brawl in general? Mm, I mean, so like the concept I'm getting is uh, play corners. Corner is like basically your best friend in terms of brawling. Uh, yes. Be proactive and take space when when needed. Use May wall proactively to wall off their tanks and engage on their tanks. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, that was a lot of good good stuff. Uh, for a first time of a VOD, that's good information that you got out of that. Um, Jay, how do you feel about this? Do you feel this? Um, yeah, I feel like it's much better than, like, how I usually play with friends, like, in uh, group in queue. Because, like, what we usually play, we'd play, like, uh, we'll group in, go all out, and then end up, half of us end up dying and half of us stay alive. So, like, this is a, right. a better way of learning, like, how to like stay aggressive and uh hold points when needed okay good um and one thing i will can i will help you with is um like there's a difference between like tempo and pacing um <laughs> the the play that I, that you just saw you can talk, by the way. It's a, oh, okay. Um, so let me explain the difference between tempo and, and pacing. So tempo, um, we'll just say T and P. Tempo is how like win con. So win con, how fast you want to look for your win con. Okay. So when I say win con, win con, obviously short for win condition. It's wow. The steps you need to take to get to your obvious win condition, okay? So with dive, it's much different. So people think, okay, let me explain the difference between tempo and pacing first. So that's this is how fast you're looking for your win condition. Now, pacing is just the speed in which you play the comp, okay? So the speed is much different from taking the steps to get to your win condition. So dive, people usually think fast, 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 fast. Sure, but you still need to take more steps than say a spam comp. You still need to path. You still need to set up. You still need to make sure like your, your tanks are set up, your DPS are set up and ready to go. And then you actually need to dive, right? So you still need those three steps to actually get to your win condition, where, say, spam is different. Spam sets up your double shield and starts 
pelting your back line like crazy almost ASAP when you come out those doors, right? Spam is setting up your wind condition or setting up your, your angles, setting up your distance, your damage. That's you, you're looking for your wind con immediately. So the tempo of a dive is much slower than the tempo of a spam. Does that make sense for you guys? Yeah. Okay. Um, brawl is about right in the middle. You still need to path, right? You don't nearly need to set up as much. So it's kind of meh. It really depends on what DPS you have. If you're playing a doom dive or a doom brawl, those are very different. Your doom needs to set up. You need to give your time for doom to set up. If your doom is just punching the and being a punch bot on the front line, that's not going to help anything. You don't want to punch a main tank. You want to dive the back line. You want to be slamming the back line. You want to be uppercutting or slamming uppercutting an Ana, slam uppercutting a BAP out of his disc and killing him. Um, so yeah, you don't need to. You kind of eh, need to do this. Like yes and no. It depends on what you have, and then you don't even dive at all, right? So the win con is kind of in the middle of a spam comp and a brawl comp and a, a dive comp. So that's the tempo. That's explaining tempo. Now speed is different. So as a dive, your speed is go in, in. Like once we get set up, once we path, once we set up, once we dive, we are balls to the wall. I mean, we are in and we are going fast. That is our point. So dives pacing is going to be much faster. Brawls pacing, once we're pathed, once we're somewhat set up, we're going just as fast. Um, so the pacing is pretty quick as well. Probably a little bit less than dive, but still pretty darn quick. Um, and then the pacing of, of a spam comp would be much slower, right? We're just using distance we're not we're taking space slowly we're not taking space like crazy like a dive or a brawl would um and just so we know uh what the difference between all of these are uh so spam is going to be i'll show you actually a spam comp in just a little bit uh like it's going to be probably a double shield and or a ball diva sometimes um and it's going to be like an ash McCree or an Ash Soldier, something that has high amounts of damage from a distance, and then something like a Zen Bap uh, that does a tremendous amount of damage from a distance. So that is a general spam comp. Does that kind of make sense for everybody? You you could run spam with Ball and Diva. One hundred percent, yeah. Uh. Um, general okay no, well it wouldn't be double hit scan it would be more of like a hit scan so you could play with ash but it, it almost always needs a tracer so it would be like a ball tracer as, as a dive core but I'll, I'll explain that to you also a little bit later too so I, I have a lot to unpack here for you guys um, but hopefully this kind of helps so uh, spam and then spam bead sprawl and then brawl beats dive And then dive beats spam. So this is kind of the holy trinity of counterplay. Um, the reason why spam beats brawl is because the purpose of brawl is to close the distance. Get on top of them, right? Get on top of the bap zen, the double shield, the uh, the ash, the hanzo, whatever else, you know, spammy characters there are. Brawl wants to get on top of them. But spam, as long as they're playing distance, will just pelt the brawl. To, and dwindle them down to the point where they can no longer actually physically get to them. So that's generally how spam would counter brawl. Um, yes, there's ways that brawl can actually counter spam, but you know that that's neither here nor there. This is just the basic basic stuff. So brawl counters dive because if dive tries to you know jump onto brawl, they want to close the distance, right? Like, come on, buddy, come right into our brawl. We're just gonna melt you away. Um, so. That's kind of why Brawl would, you know, obviously counter dive and then dive into spam. Yeah, spam, of course, you know, is easy to dive onto. Dive, as long as they're pathing and setting up correctly, can easily jump onto a spam. Something like a Babs in, easily delete them, no brig, right? Easy stuff. So does this counterplay stuff kind of make sense to you in a in, a, in the grand scheme of things? Mm-hmm. Okay. The holy trinity of the yeah, as you said, like spam, dive, and brawl. That's very useful, and like this got me thinking. Like, as a team, we should have a 
specific hero to play as in spam, dive, and bra. So for example, bra, uh, Ryan, uh, dive, uh, Winston, spam, uh, Orisa or something like that. So yeah, it could be double shield, or it could be you know it can you actually so when you when you mention the uh, you can play those characters with ball. I apologize. You generally want to play those with a ball sigma. So the sigma allows the backline to get a little bit of breathing room, and then you just spam behind the sigma shield. Uh, that's generally on longer maps how you would play a spam comp with a ball. But still ideal to have a tracer, but you don't have to have a tracer. <clears throat> okay, so now we've talked about tempo, we've talked about pacing, and we kind of understand that. We've talked about the holy trinity of counterplay. Um, so that is that. Is that. Um, let's continue on. Actually, I think we've gotten enough brawl. I think we really understand how we're supposed to play brawl. Uh, we have a good corner here that we want to play around push out with ultimates and or resources another good corner to here to play around and then here is an, a somewhat of a difficult story but what happens here is when we play around either this corner or this corner and we win the engagement we generally want to push so hard that we want to stuff the doors so then we look to push up and say stuff doors stuff doors so we can have a ryan here and then we'll look to wall off with may the choke stuff like that Yes, is it, it might they come out the other side? Sure, right? We don't necessarily know, but most of the time they come out here. Why? Because there's natural cover. There's natural cover here. There's natural cover here that you generally want to play around. If you come around here, you have literally no natural cover. So that that's why most teams subconsciously they gravitate towards this side. So if you stuff the doors, you can stuff the doors this side, and it would be you know an optimal play. Okay. Um, Maybe I quickly go over this. I don't know how we we cap it fast, so. Yeah, I mean they're just making a shit ton of space. Yep, absolutely. They got a pick, and they just capitalizing off of it. My Lucio likes to read it sometimes. Don't mind him. <laughs> little, little frog. Okay, we're playing once again. Look how the team's playing, right? We're playing very disciplined. On corners, corners, corners. We're waiting here. We're waiting for the our team to to put or the payload to push, and we're looking to engage here. We have four ultimates. We've already made a game plan, but we're playing around corners, and that's the most important part. Okay. Now they window. We just kite it. That's all. Especially because now we're playing. We're we're playing a corner, right? They out. They wall the corner. We push back. We just say, okay, well, we'll just line aside it. We'll play around our corners. Ryan's until kind your of stuck. Windows up. He is stuck. He is stuck. That's true. And I think he was looking to play a little bit more aggressive because that was the game plan. Uh, but then they windowed, right? Um, so he's doing a good job sustaining. But we kind of kited it. That was the that was the call was to kite it. I actually told the team we should have played more aggressively and took the corner uh, with like a May alt. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. It's still decent that they look to, to kite it. And this is what you call ebb and flow, okay? So if, for those of you that have probably not heard the concept, um, when the enemy team looks to use an ultimate, say here, right, and they're looking to take space, we kite and then we come back with our ultimates. Uh, this is a lot of high-level play, to be honest. You'll see this a lot in, in Contenders. You'll see this a lot in Overwatch League where you'll, look, you'll see this push and pull type of gameplay. So we've cutted it. Now we have our alts coming back in. We're sustaining our Ryan. We're playing our corner. And we're going to be looking to go in here soon. Okay, now we use our own window. It got it walled off, but that's fine. This gives us enough space to then use this corner, right? Now we have corner control. Now we can look to turn the corner with a male. Now we can look to um, drag and straight through here and split them off, right? We have options. Um, and then... This also puts them at a disadvantage because they have no sustained spots, right? So this window is a good window. Uh, just because it wasn't off of the corner and or it wasn't here, uh, it still buys us the corner. And our, this corner is by far the most co uh, important corner on this this map or this point. Does that kind of make sense for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now they don't have anywhere to go. 
and we just throw the default in there. Huge shatter. We just throw all of our alts because we just need this point right here. So, okay. All right. Now we go on to where the heck are we going? Rialto. This is going to be more of a spammy comp. It's interesting. This is, um, yeah, this is a tier three player, uh, four, 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 five. This is a four, five ladder player. I think he's in tier three as well. And then this is a tier two graphics designer, also a uh, GM, GM like four, four player. I've seen Ag. Yeah, she's uh she's a tier two graphics designer for like two or three different teams. Only one on my team that's a tier two player is Sugareru. He is insane, like really, really, really talented. <clears throat> okay, I'll actually show you guys. I don't really want to go on attack too much. I think the defense is where it's at. Uh, we held, full held them first point, um, and it was pretty good. Um, so, yeah, okay, so now we're playing like, hey, this is a good opportunity to kind of explain Ball, ball Sigma. Um, so Tracer and Ball are almost always together. Um, Tracer should have been uh, pathing with the Ball. The reason why, uh, do we have Ball players or play, intend on playing Ball at all, if you guys learn it, or do you guys want to kind of stick with something else? I'm willing to learn. I'm on the way. Okay, cool. cool. Um, so yeah, tracers should be with the ball. Why? Because if if the ball gets caught in rotation against an enemy tracer and or another DPS that can kind of melt the ball, the the tracer is going to be there to help the rotation of the ball. Um. So yeah, that being said, another thing is um. Sorry, I'm trying to think here. Um. <laughs> Okay, we're pushing out to a certain point, um, and once we push out, we can then take high ground away from the enemy team. Uh, you would want to do that by having different cores. So let me explain the cores first in this. Um, let's exclude this and call this a curry. No, let's call it a. Uh, da, da, da. Sure, let's call it a curry for now. Um, and yes, I'm going to have a very difficult time calling him Cassidy. So um, I'm just going to stick with curry for now because yeah. No, I don't okay. know why they changed that. It's annoying. <laughs> uh, so we got to think of this as, as different cores. So this is going to be one core. This is going to be our, our main core. Okay. Um, main. And this is going to be our dive core. Dive. Okay. So every time the ball goes in, the tracer is right next to the ball and looks to be capitalized on the ball slam, on the ball rotation. Doesn't matter as long as the tracer's there. And then you have the main core looking to take staircase and come up and take high ground. That then allows your Ana. Um, honestly, this is actually, I don't know why we're playing Ana. This is actually supposed to be a Zen. Um, so then this allows our Zen, our break. Uh, to come up here, establish discords, and start melting people from afar. Um, and it also gives them no place to kind of go to. Um, so yeah. If this was, uh, if we had D.Va though, we'd allow D.Va to, to stay on cart because D.Va can contribute to the high ground uh, and the sustain of high ground if she needed to. Um, but yeah, I, I, will, I, won't, I won't teach D.Va quite yet. D.Va is actually kind of complicated. <clears throat> It could also be Tracer pushing the cart as well. Um, so uh, when the ball comes up here and slams, what's going to happen, especially if our core rotates up, so our main core, our our Sigma, our Brig, our Ana, um, and like our Kree, right? They look to push up through here. Um, even if it's not a McCree, it doesn't matter. It could be Widow. Um, but our main core, so Sigma, Brig, and Anna, will push up through here. Our ball will slam on this balcony. And when our Tracer is pushing uh, point, she can just capitalize and clean up on the floor. Um, so does that kind of make sense of how we would push this this like point out? Yeah. Okay. So that's the one that would push cart um, in this specific comp. Uh, it's going to kind of change from comp to comp, to be honest with you, but... So now there goes our backline, 
our Sigmar, our Anna, and our Brig are all rotating top. And now we look, to, there's, there's the ball slam, and now our front line looks to just push up. Or our core looks to push up, and we just push them off of high ground. So now we, we have our space established. <clears throat> sure, the monkey's barely staying on the corner, but we're probably not going to let him stay there. At least we should. There's the tracer pushing cart. And there's our backline finally pushing up. So Tracer oh, tried to do something with the uh shot. Yeah, yeah. The uh this is like I said, Calix is insane. He's he's a very good uh hit scan player. Uh actually is a very insane widow as well. Um so yeah, when the ball went in though, the tracer tried to do something with the ball, uh, but got clapped. <laughs> But we still do a good job of just holding space, not allowing them to really do much. Now we push out again. They clapped us again. I think we finally cap here. We cap all three, but I think our first point was pretty rough. We do go Ryan. That's right. And the reason why we're going Ryan is for double shield and trying to negate the Widow because we knew the Widow was her was his strong suit. Um, so that's kind of why we did that. And then we just look to play core or look to play uh, point and force point and look for them to come on to us so we can brawl them. And it worked because the Widow literally didn't get a single shot. So that's the that's the power of counterplay. At least when you're playing into a widow, there's multiple ways you can play into a widow. You can play like double shield. You can play you know multiple things that will negate the widow and deny her access. You could play monkey diva and dive her. You and there's multiple things you could do with a widow. So um, yeah, there's a lot of people, a lot of teams that play into a, like a really good widow and they just don't know how to play. Um, so that's definitely one way you can play into a widow. Okay. So this is going to be our typical double shield. Uh, we have an Echo here. We have a, an Ash here. Does anybody have any questions about this comp before you see it in action? What's the purpose of the Brig? Brig is to protect the um, the BAP. So I'm not sure if you see how much the Brig is actually helping, especially when we're trying to push out the enemy team here. You can't push into a Brig. It's nearly impossible for you to push into a brick. It's very difficult to do so. Um, so the brick assists in keeping and holding space for your backline, and also his sole his sole purpose is to be a bodyguard for the bat. Because if the bat goes down, our main sustain goes down. With a Zen or with a Lucio or with a, an Anna, for example, Anna's not going to be able to peel for a bat as much as a brick is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And another reason is how is an Ana going to hit an Echo consistently, right? So Brig uh Briggs that's another responsibility of Brig is Briggs Brig knows that she is the only one that's going to be able to hit the Echo. So most of her packs are going to go to pocketing the Echo and most of Bap's heals are going to be for to uh sustain the main core here. So now we start to fall back. Uh, once they get the cart to a specific spot, the most important spot to hold on defense in this map is this corner. This is a yeah. huge corner. Um, because not only the main corner, it's also this corner. So if you get pushed out too hard here and you have literally no resources, just pop this corner right ahead here and you have a double, double corner, double shields, right? Uh, and this allows you to keep your resources and gain them back, I guess you can say. Get your abilities back, get your shield back, etc. And then look to push back out. 
and keep this corner here. This is this is your golden key to victory. If you do not keep this corner, you will have a very difficult time. But you have to sustain and stay alive as a tank, especially. So. Give you guys a little bit of a treat. Look back at that a little bit so you can see the amount of damage that's probably happening here. Big dynamite. Trying to break shield. Dink. Great dynamite, because this is this is this is a, what you call a soft link here, or a soft angle, and this is a fantastic spot for not only dynamites. This is a great spot for ananades, stuff like that. Why? Because the enemy team is stationed here, right? They're matching shields in a way on this corner. If you put something right here and it explodes, either a dynamite uh, and ananade doesn't matter. It it explodes on their back line. And that's something that that's why soft flanks can be utilized really well to a dangerous extent. Look at the echo here. The echo is just kind of spamming, uh, looking for picks. Yep, we're playing because what type of comp are we playing? Spam. Exactly right. We're playing a spam comp. And there's another way we can identify, by the by the way, of like what type of comp they're playing. So in, in ladder, you're going to see a lot of just crazy ass shit, right? <laughs> but in a way, you can try to dissect it. First, you would go with the tanks and say, okay, what is my tank's front lines trying to establish? Even if it was like a hog. Let's say here, it was, this is a hog. Hogs are played rampant in ladder, right? Let's say it's a hog sigma. Okay, well, that means we are still spam. So this is a spam. Let's say we have a... Give me random DPS. Uh, Hanzo. Hanzo, okay. We have a Hans. And what else? Reaper. Reaper. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, so when we look at this, we think spam. When we look at this, we think brawl. Okay. And then what are our backline? Bap and uh, Lucio. Bap Lucio, okay. Let's go Lucio. So then we can think Bap and Lucio. Well, that feeds right into our brawl. So what do we have on our hands here? We have a bram, uh, a spam brawl hybrid. And what does that mean we want to do? That means we want to poke in our first phase. So as we're closing the distance, as we're first engaging, we want to look to poke. And then we want to close the distance to brawl. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay. So we poke to either get a pick or put them really low, and then we're looking to go in and brawl. So that's kind of how you would dissect a team comp um, and what you guys want to try to like establish. So this is fantastic because, the, like, it, it, if anybody plays Echo, um, these angles, these type of angles are just lethal because it may, it gives the enemy team a very difficult thing to do, especially as you're if you're an Arissa pushing out here, you want to either you're forced to either look down and deal with that or look directly up and deal with an Echo, damn near impossible, right? Very, very difficult to want to just go straight up and start looking at an Echo. So these type of angles here as Echo are just a pain in the butt to deal with. Um, and it can be at the same time highly oppressive uh, as, as Echo player. So definitely think about the different angles that you can be aggressive with, even like super aggressive, like short, and still be insanely effective, okay? This echo alone is almost holding the, the choke.
now we act, uh, so the uh, as well like if, as an echo when you have an alt you almost always want to alt the tank why because you want to hold the space and or push the space out um so what's that well what's their echo doing their echo uh, he's just Let's kind of out. he's just kind of winning by himself using it all oh he okay. copied bab <laughs> I think you accidentally copied Bap. Let's let's take a look at that. That's funny. I want to say it's an accident though. Yep. Well, he was he, he die, meant to, so, yeah. He he meant to copy Brig, I think, uh to be honest with you. Brig would have been a much better pick here. Um not still not optimal, but probably the best. Actually, well, I mean, the tank was, but considering where he was looking at and the time frame he needed to copy, a break was definitely the option. Um, if if you if I had to pick, it definitely would have been a Sigur and Arissa though, uh, to be able to do much. But he should have, what he should have done was stay up here and look to copy an Echo or a Sigma, because um, then you could have essentially three shields and just belt their backline and then kill them for the most part and then look to push out you know here drop here and look to kill the backline as well um so the echo definitely messed up on the copies um but hey even for three four four players mess up like that but that's a pretty big mess up i'll be honest with you that's just a copy diff right there now we're just wrecking havoc, and then he gets he gets an alt on their backline. He's just destroying their entire backline. <laughs> it's insanely aggressive. So you see, as as we push back up, so we get the kill again. We get a bunch of kills. We wipe them. We take this angle again. Why? Because we want to spam them and poke them out, right? That's that's one of our main win conditions is to spam and establish like angles and distance to make sure we're maximizing our comp and the value we're getting from our comp. Okay, Sugu dies. Kind of silly that he was over there. Shouldn't have been over there. Not a big deal. We rotate again. Back out to this corner. We rally. Great sustain through the Sigol. Ball's rolling in by himself. DPS aren't set up. So this is another thing with a ball comp. If your DPS are not set up and not doing anything to assist this ball, this ball is doing jack nothing. He's going to get immediately destroyed. Why? Because all six people can stare at him while he's being a fool, right? Nobody's press applying pressure. Tracer's not over here applying pressure. Echo's not over here applying pressure. Their front line hasn't even pushed out much. The BAP isn't applying pressure. You see why this is very important as a as a main tank to make sure that your DPS are set up to actually be effective in a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um oh, am I am I boring any of you guys or is this like uh is this actually really helping? No, it's helping. No, it's okay. really helpful. Okay, cool. I just think okay. like uh, when you copy sick like in high ground, it's such so much basically pressures for the enemy team to try to kill you. But since you're in the high, you're in the high ground with your team, you just get so much R charge and you just go in. Yep, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> And this is what I call like directional resources as well. Like if, if your DPS are forcing directional resources, the, the brig's not going to be able to pack and has to turn around and deal with it. The, you know, BAP is forced to stare at the Echo and try to kill him. The Ash is forced to stare at the Echo and try to kill him. Therefore, you only have Arissa, you have Sigma, and maybe Tracer trying to deal with the ball. That's probably not going to be enough. The ball's going to get away. And in the meantime, your your core is safe and pelting everybody down. So th this is the power of, of forcing directional resources as DPS and making sure, especially the main tank, if you're going to go in, 
where are your DPS? If you were inting your brains out 1v6, that's not the way to go. This is not the way to play the game of Overwatch. And even, like I said, 4-4 four, four players make the silly, silly mistakes um, where they could have been playing a lot better and a lot more collected. He still got away, but hey. And the only time they get a little bit of success is when they push us off this corner. But we still take it right back. <laughs> they even have one more, but I think, yeah, we have. Good ulti con. As defenders, shouldn't you shouldn't you use your all first? Um, I think. Hold on, I think they're playing. Hold on. A good question, though. Let me see how they how they use it. Okay, we did use bomb first, right? We got a bomb off on the Zen, so the Zen dies. Um, we already got a call a, a kill on on Ball because he's in, probably inting again. That's my guess. Let me take a look. Yep, he's inting again. He's already half health. He goes and gets healed. And then Chaser got bomb he's... from him. <laughs> yep. So the ball completely fed, to be honest with you. That's funny. That actually looks funny. Um, yeah, so that that's that's a, the biggest one of the biggest mistakes that they made or made. And then the woof, then the tra wow, okay. Let's look at Sugi on this tracer. Trace Did he go tracers. high ground? Yes, he's a nutcase. Oh. He takes the... Oh, okay, now he's recalled. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, that should have been in his montage. Oh my god, the tracking. Okay. Yeah, he's a nutcase. Okay, um, so hopefully this helps you guys' understanding of spam comp, how we want to play it, um, understanding how Brick fits into the spam comp meta, um, can really brawl out those areas and push and, and keep space. Um, we can even kind of look at a little bit of the Brig too on some of these engagements, and you can kind of understand how the Brig is played in, in these engagements here, how they help keep space, hold space, um, brawl, the t brawl, whatnot. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Because yes, she feels a little pointless sometimes. But then when they close the gap and they're looking to actually do anything in the core, she is just stomping on them. But you have to play disciplined. At constantly on a swivel too, and you just like realize you have responsibilities to do, but at the same time, I mean, you're you're constantly like the big mama, right? Like you're protecting everybody, you are packing everybody. Like your responsibilities are just as important as a diva. With how much you have to look at, how much you have to uh, do your actions per minute. If you look, he's literally has very little downtime. Right as I say that, he's humping the floor, um, but like the the very little downtime, and as in like scouting where people are, uh, trying to push out threats, uh, healing, all of that. Very, very little downtime. <laughs> Actually funny. Okay. That's hilarious. Okay. Um, so we looked at a spam. We looked at a brawl. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. We didn't win it, though, but we can maybe look at some uh, six-man. Big 
it kind of give you guys a general idea on like what dive kind of looks like and right now dive is it can be played with a monkey diva um anna oh i already have it ilios 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 Did I put it in? Um, yeah. So it could it could be a monkey monkey diva, um, brig Anna variation, or it could be like a six man dive variation. Um, and when I say six man dive, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so this is it here. Our controls are very difficult sometimes. Ugh. Okay. Kind of foreign. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the other way around, didn't I? There we go. Yeah. Uh, so the six man vari uh, dive variation would be the Monkey Diva, uh, Tracer Sombra, Lucio Mora. Um, this is played very quickly. Um, our tempo is actually relatively quick. It, it's a lot quicker than, say, a Monkey Diva or a Monkey Diva with a Briggs in or a Brigana um, variation. It, this is more just get in, getting quick, be very quick with your dives, uh, be cohesive, play almost pretty much play as a brawl, but with dive core characters. Um, Lucio inting. Does this, anybody have? Questions about this comp now? Sorry, I just returned. What comp are we looking at? We're looking at six man. Okay. Uh, so six man. This is a six man dive. Uh, what I was talking about. So, uh, it's a played with some a mix of like brawl and dive characters. So obviously like a brawly backline, um, with mostly dive DPS and frontline. Why is everyone <laughs> mirroring? That's so boring. Um, this is just this map and this part of the map too. If you look at the other two parts of these maps, they actually aren't uh, mirroring. It's just that six man is so good on this because it's so wide open um, <clears throat> and so fast paced that if you played something like a Widow or if you played an Ash, stuff like that, this six man will absolutely wreck it. <clears throat> because you're playing so quickly and you just demolish the back the front line so any like i said if you're playing any type of hit scan the sombra is going to hack the main tank our our monkey diva and tracer are just going to delete the target that that was hacked um so it's it becomes very difficult for anybody to really sustain against a six man because it's so open and um easily diveable i guess you can say there isn't stuff there isn't a lot of indoor areas right like here or you know here these aren't optimal areas to want to take an engagement in um, lots of other maps have a lot of indoor areas that kind of keep six man away because the the weakness this is a dive right this is a dive comp what's the weakness of this comp in our holy trinity brawl what's the weakness of a dive comp brawl brawl yeah okay so exactly, Brawl, right? And Brawl is fantastic in, in enclosed areas where if you come into a Brawl and you start rolling in and, and diving in or whatever, you're going to get stomped very quickly. Uh, where a six-man, you can't really play Brawl in an open area. Why? Because like the Sombra will come around, take an angle. Tracer will come around, take an angle. Um, and it'll be very difficult for the Brawl to actually do much because they'll just d dwindle away the back line. Um, so yeah. That kind of makes sense for you guys. I know there's a lot of information that I'm pouring out here. Yeah, it makes sense. <sighs> okay. So I just wanted to show you this. They're they're engaging on the the corner where where they're not really engaging on the point. They're engaging near the point, so around the HP pack, and then there's natural covers things like that. Yeah, there's this uh, there's a statue here. There's the pillars as well. Um, it makes it a little bit better. Um, I won't give into the go into the like core details as to why we're lose gonna lose this like engagement. Um, but just know that in six man monkey bubble is the core concept of 
keeping space. Once the monkey bubble is down, uh, if we do not get value past that, it's going to be very difficult to hold or keep space um, or even create space for that fact. Um, so, yeah. You notice our Ramona kind of stops past the monkey bubble. It's a little difficult for us to do much. Now their monkey bubble's down, and now our monkey's dead. Okay. <sighs> Is there anything that you guys would like me to look at and or cover? Um, or, you know, anything else that you can think of that you have questions on? Um All of that. So I know Anthony really uh, is interested in playing Widow and Tracer. As a Widowmaker, like especially in King's Row and things like that, where should he be standing? Okay. I will go over that. Oh, what? How many King's Rows I have? It's a different King's Row. Oh, no, it's the same one. Okay. So on attack... Um, as your team is pushing through, depending on if they're statue, we go through hotel, right? And if we go through hotel and we're looking to sustain here, I would expect the widow to grapple up here and take a complete 180 angle. So you or should be, these are your main points of aggression. And it really just depends on where your team is playing. If your team is playing, you know, yes, we could rotate. We're sure we could flip map and play here. Probably not. Very common, but very effective. And if you're here on the 180 off angle, applying a 180 to the back of pressure, it's going to be insanely difficult for the enemy team to defend against and or push this. Um, so that's something you could explore. Um, so let's say another option is if we're going through here and we're playing statue, uh, you could look to kind of rotate through here and look to grapple to this side apply pressure until it's no longer viable. So let's say if we pro apply enough pressure and we're playing around here, this area is now obsolete. So what you want to try to do is rotate further. So the just pretty much mirror the aggression of your team. If your team is playing all the way up here and our shields are here, you should be here. Always applying the pressure, always applying pressure. The more pressure you apply, the better it is. Because like I said, I don't care how many you hit. I care if you're in the right spot. That's what I care about. Yeah. Um, you could have an awful aim, right? But the likeliness of you hitting these shots are, and these free shots for the most part are what's going to bring the most value. You can hit 50% of your oh shit. What's, what's a bad accuracy? What, 30%, 40%? Yeah. So let's say like 40, you can hit 40% of your shots. But if you're back here, the likeliness of you hitting a shot is probably like 25%, 20%. Um, probably even less, to be honest with you. You'll probably get shielded every shot. But if you're putting yourself in a 90-degree angle off angle um, where no one's going to be able to contest you, right? Like, let's say you're playing against our comp. Who's going to contest you? Right? Like, if we're playing here, who's who's going to be able to get over here and actually contest the, the, the um, high ground? Sure, maybe Diva, but then Diva's taking away DM from the from the Ryan. So it's gonna be very difficult to play into. Um, so something to take into consideration. You can even rotate into here and apply pressure. You could rotate all the way around and apply even more pressure. It just really depends on where you're at. But these angles are what's really gonna buy you, you know, the victories. Um, even here to start with, because sometimes you know the teams will come up and match and play here. And if you're here, cool. If you get to here, even better to apply that pressure. So, um, does that kind of make sense for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I um, feel like in lower ranks as well as in higher ranks, Widowmaker, if even if she's not getting kills, the fact that she can apply so much pressure and then make everyone back off is something that is super strong in the team fight. And then if yep. like someone dives on Widow, that the person who dives is out of position from the rest of his team. So we, as a team, we could just focus on one person, and that's like six versus five. So. Yep. I mean, even if Widow gets one pick, it's just so valuable, especially on if it's a backline like a BAP. Like, understand who gets picked, right? So if you pick a BAP, well, 
damn, there goes literally the whole sustain. There goes your lamp. There goes so much of that gone. You pick a Lucio. Okay, well, they don't have speed now. So what can we do? We can probably utilize speed against them, which means pressing tempo faster than they can uh, or pressing pacing faster than they can. If we, This is if we're mirroring. Um, if we down the May, okay, now we have wall advantage. Now we have May, a blizzard advantage if possible. If we down the Cree, okay, now we can actually like push core through here and probably Cree flank through here and create a pincer attack. Their Cree's, our Cree's not going to be contested because their Cree's dead. Um, there's so, you see what, like, the, now we can start to see. Uh, obviously, if we get a pick on the on the diva, that means they have no DM. So we could just pick on the Ryan the entire time, and the Ryan will die. Uh, if we don't have Ryan, they have literally nobody to have space or create space. So we could just just push W shield as Ryan and literally just press W, and you win. So picking any of these targets, you just have to understand what the enemy team is losing and how to play into that. <clears throat> This this reminds um, me of oh. what Sherfer did. Like during the Overwatch League, the the Gladiators uh went behind the rest of the other team and then Sherfer was in spawn. He switched yep. to Widowmaker and just dom dominated everyone. Well, because what they did was I believe they flipped the map as well, right? Didn't yeah. the, the core go through here? Yeah, they flipped the map and then he's able to play here and just play right into the back line. Um it's yeah, you just destroyed them that way. <clears throat> it makes sense. You flip the team, you flip the map, you create vulnerabilities as well uh, for their backline. Uh, did you? Did we say there was a Doom player in the team as well, or no? Yeah, I played Doom. Well, I used to okay. play Doom. Uh, so this is gonna how I'm gonna want you guys to play Brawl. Um, so I would like a Cree, a Cree Doom, uh, if possible. Uh, usually we play it. When we're not being serious, like, oh, well, I guess when we're scrimming, that's not when we're not being serious. It's just that we're playing comps that we know we're not, like, amazing at. Um, but Doom would generally set up here. And as a Doom, uh, anytime you're playing a Doom, you want to create a kill box. So the kill box would be somewhere around here. Um, what you're going to want to do is play uh, here uh, at the front line and then look to play around. And then you would end up being here. Um and as the team comes in, the t your enemy team would have to be somewhere around here. The Doom would come in and engage. Then our core comes in and engages at the same time. So the Doom would slam right onto their backline, uppercut, and then our core is pushing at that exact time. Um, that creates cohesiveness, and this is a general kill box in where you want to be engaging. Um, let's say now that we... <clears throat> now that we... let's Let's move... Doom's location to here. Where's our kill box change to? Uh, the choke right there. Perfect. So if we're here, now the the kill box is changed to a general area past here. And our team can play up. We could look to hit at the same time Doom does. Doom slams. And boom. Now we've created another kind of kill box and understanding of how we can apply that pressure. Um, let's go... Here, let's say our core is set up on the corner where, let's say, Doom is set up here. Where is our engage? In the middle. Perfect, right? Obviously, pretty pretty simple stuff. Uh, you want to look to slam here. Core pushes in at the same time. Okay. And they're going <clears> to <throat> have a hard time retreating because it's right in the middle. I agree exactly, and it's a it's cornered uh, kind of open spacious, which could be very difficult to defend against Doom. Um, how about we are holding the corner here? Our Doom is set up here. Wouldn't the Doom kind of a half have a hard time engaging because everyone's looking at him straight at a like linear angle? Oh, this is that's good because it's a tr kind of a trick question. So what we would end up having to do is give up the corner to here, engage, and then the Doom would look to engage here. Yeah. Okay. So as long as we're kind of understanding, like, kill boxes and what that kind of means. So let's say we're playing a ball. Um, a ball is another kill box-oriented player. Uh, probably wouldn't be playing ball on King's Row very much, but either way, 
we should start to understand like what Let's see here. Bop, 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 bop. Um, um, Ilios, to, 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 sure. Let's do Ilios. Okay. So as a ball, when they're pushing out, let's say they're pushing out through, you know, they're they're pushing out through here, um, and as the comp we have, we have a let's say a sombra here. We have our diva, Zen, and I'm assuming he's gonna go tracer. Diva Zen Brig here. Um, tracer, I don't know, here. Where should the ball look to engage? What would be our like um, our kill box? I want to say near the support the supports are at. Supports? Where would the support oh right here? Yeah, I wanna say like right like around the the middle hole right there, but a little bit near where the supports are. So like here? Yeah, somewhere near there. It would actually be right here because you don't want to give them too much space, right? Like right as they cross a choke, that's when you generally want to kill the, have the kill box set up so we can go, you know, here, get a hack off. We can have Tracer come around the back um, and apply pressure. And then our core could look to probably push up a little bit as well um, to apply that pressure. And this is a good example as to why D.Va can excel in these situations because D.Va can... Doesn't we don't need a shield here, right? We don't need a shield for the backline to be successful because it's such short sight lines that we won't get poked out. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So the diva can kind of be aggressive and doesn't have to be like don't, we don't need a shield um, for these yeah shorter sight lines. So okay. I don't know. What do we play here? Oh, we actually play some. Oh, okay, no, we play chaser. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, so yeah, we kind of went over kill boxes. Now we've won over every comp. Um, any more questions? So I know you're uh, looking for screams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, our, I, I'm not sure if you saw the Google sheet I sent you. Uh, I thought I did, but I didn't think at the time anybody filled it out. All right, so right now we have around how many? Like four or five people who filled it out, including me. So um, yeah, would you mind looking at it? Uh, as I told you, like normally we practice on uh, weekends, but sometimes people the when you, sometimes on weekdays. Uh, I know Brand used to DM me, and uh, we basically play games and have our review during the week, the, during the school week. Mm. Yeah, um, I know, and you said that we should aim for at least two scrims every week. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so my question was like, um, no, I want to see if we can like uh, squeeze a scrim during Saturday, because Saturday is when we have the most time. And then somewhere okay. throughout the week, in the middle of the week, we do a scrim at that time. And then on okay. Sunday, we review those uh, scrims, basically, and practice. Yeah, that's that's fine. I think Sundays would be a decent day to, to get the, some VODs done. Um, I can't promise to always be at your guys' scrims, but if I have time and I'm able to make it, uh, because I am a collegiate coach, I, I coach Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, uh, 5 to 7 Eastern Standard Time, or no, 8 to 7 Eastern Standard Time. Um, so it can be kind of difficult, uh, especially with wife, kids, you know, all the above. It's going to, it's kind of a crazy life, but, um, uh, I will definitely put in more than the minimum that's asked of me. Um, what's asked of me from aim labs is an hour a week, uh, of just like live footage, but I don't feel like that's enough to help a team improve in my opinion. Uh, so I'll probably be, you know, adding more. It's just when I can add that, right? Like it's going to be a little difficult for me to fit things in here and there, but I, you'll definitely see me fitting <laughs> fitting in when I can. Um, and then obviously via Discord, I'm going to be available 24-7. Um, yeah. So yeah, another and then question. You guys... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, another question was mine. Was, uh, I know that the ones that are here right now, the four of us are here, we're very dedicated to improving. 
uh, there's a few members who aren't. So how would you, um, how would you deal with them in a way that to improve them or want them to come? Um, well, I mean, here's the honest and brutal truth. Like you can't help somebody that doesn't want to help themselves. Um, and you can't, you can only kind of lead a horse to water. You can't force them to drink type of situation. Um, <clears throat> So that's really up to their own dedication. Like I can't hold you. I, I can hold you guys accountable to a certain extent, but I can't make them want to improve. If that makes sense. Like yeah. it's unfortunate, but like if you were on my collegiate team, that'd be a whole other different story because then I'd be like, why are you even here? Right? Like don't, don't be here if you're going to waste everybody's time. Um, on a high school team, it's a little bit more difficult because you can't just be like, why you're here? Because then you just might lose a player and then not have a team. Um, <clears throat> that could be a little bit more difficult. I can help them improve, but how much do they want to improve themselves? I can't improve that, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I would think they'd be excited to have a coach to help them get better, but, you know, I, I, I don't know, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's kind of a teenage mentality, so. Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of teenagers that are willing to improve. I think it's really just their their want and their priorities in where they, you know, where they see improvement in Overwatch may or may not be very high. Um, so, yeah, because I've seen I've seen teenagers be insanely coachable and insanely willing to improve. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. But like I said, man, I'm like, I'm willing to be here to help you guys improve, but it's how much you guys absorb, how much you guys put it into practice, how much you want to learn, how much you want to, you know, enact and get better is really up to the the players themselves. Um, as long as they show up to scrim and hopefully VODs here and there, that's what's going to help. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I maybe they view this VOD and they, they you know, get it together i guess i don't know they, they they see that there's an opportunity here like i've made so many players better i've i've like my last coaching clash where i hit the what was it the three two to three nine team both of the tanks hit uh top 500 from freaking 3.2 i mean in six weeks on top of it like it ju it's just how much dedication do you want to put in how serious are you taking it and you know that will dictate how much better you get as a team. Plain and simple. Yeah. I like the mechanical stuff. I can't help with that. Uh, I know Card Q, uh, he's very famous in Overwatch. Card Q makes a lot of great videos about like mechanics and things like that. So, um, I have, so I have some Fresno State players who may or may not help. With the mechanical side, um, I, I don't really coach mechanics too much because, I mean, honestly, the way I improve these teams is through straight macro understanding. I feel like you can be the most worst aimed player in the world, but if you understand micro or macro in a much deeper level, you immediately improve like ASAP. So what I come in and do with, with lower SR teams is just teach the game of Overwatch on basic fundamental aspects. And then you'll see yourselves becoming much smarter players and your decision making will become much better as well. So overall, you improve um, tremendously without even really having to focus on aim or mechanics or anything like that. I feel like, like knowledge of the game of Overwatch goes so much further than teaching you how to aim type of thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, because if you see players like Shroud, for example, Shroud is a god gamer, right? He's got some of the best aim on the planet, but when you put him in Overwatch, he's a plat player average. He can't climb past that. Why? Because he just doesn't understand the game. In this game, you can't just come in and own the leaderboards with god aim. Like You have to understand the game on a much deeper level and understanding what carrying means um, and in which, you know, Thing, things dynamically change with each comp and each player in the game. So if you don't understand that on a deeper level, you're not going to succeed. So Yeah, I definitely agree with that.
So that's why I teach heavy macro and hope to like install a lot of understanding to you guys. So then your shot calling becomes better, your cohesiveness comes better, it becomes better. Um, hopefully your target calling becomes better. Like cleaning you guys all up is really what I enjoy doing um, with lower SR teams. Just just coming in, cleaning off the gunk, getting you organized, setting all the pieces and parts together to be successful, and then go out there and, and start practicing. And you'll you'll see quite a bit of improvement pretty fast um but yeah like i said it's all how people view improvement and want to be there yeah do you think we should have like a primary shot caller then secondary and uh tertiary uh no just just one shot caller all right um so but i mean i i think you should have a target caller i think you should have an alt tracker um but most importantly, I don't even focus on alt tracking first. I focus on making sure there's an actual game plan, like a, a shot calling being had before I try to fix all the other stuff. Yeah. Because if nobody goes into the engagement knowing what is going on, everything's going to fall apart from, you know, you're not setting yourself up for, for success by not having a shot call or not having a plan, not knowing what ultimates you're going to engage with, not knowing how you're going to recontest. Uh, all of that stuff can is is vital to keeping you guys all on the same page. Um, sometimes having a plan and just you know running in there as six and and doing what you can will be more successful than you know everybody having a plan, uh, having shot calling, having you know alt tracking, target calling, but nobody follows up on each other and nobody follows with each other. Like that's going to be less successful than making a game plan and running in as six together. Trusting each other is really important. Um, anything else? I can answer questions all day, man. Just make sure and ask them. Mm, I mean, so far, that's my question. Uh, I'm not sure what, if others have any questions. Terminator, if you have any, just type them out, I guess. Are you able to chat, or are you just not able to chat because of people around you? Okay. Another cool thing I would like you guys to do. I don't know if I don't know if you're gonna. It's gonna work with two v two. There is a cool little game mode that I like to do. Mm -mm. Not it. Uh, hope. Here we go. Um, I don't know if anybody has me added. Did I even put my B tag in here? Probably not. Battle tag's in the server thing. Yeah. Who's battle tag? Just oh, anyone okay. that I want to share right now. I got it. Oh. Uh... If my friends list isn't full. Was that even? Yeah, that's Jax. Okay. Oh no, I don't know if I know how to turn off the bot. I forgot about that. used to say it in there. Okay. Well, that's my player. Uh, 
<sighs> Do you have any everybody else's tag? Well, I think Anthony also shared his. Wow. Okay. You guys don't have each other added? Oh. <laughs> I have. I, I have know. them added on another account, but this account no. Gonna make me add all of you separately. God. <laughs> Awful. Oh, uh, Jack, do you mind if I log into the other one that you sent me? Uh, sure. Okay. Might not have enough friends. Watch this gonna happen. Nope. Oh, you guys. Okay, fair enough. Your list is full. I knew it. See, I told you. Anybody else have each other added though to get as many uh, players? I have them added. Yeah, we got them. Okay, cool. That's all four. Uh, we don't have an even amount, which is unfortunate. But there is a a bot Winston, which is pretty papega. But hey, that's okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is play uh, the back line. So. I should have just told you guys what's going to happen, but um, we're going to play like a Briggs in and like um, a D.Va or something like that. I'm just giving you an example. I know you guys are, this isn't all like the correct stuff, but go ahead, Brig. Wow. Do you guys have a Winston? Oh, uh, I can see so. No, this should have be a bot Winston here. Oh, you don't have a bot Winston. No? Do we have a bot Winston? Oh, it's not there. Wow, usually the bot Winston is supposed to be there. Okay, so what happens here is when somebody gets picked, it restarts in another part of the map. No, it's, um, go ahead, go ahead and get a uh, pick one of us or try to. <laughs> Kill me, kill me, kill me. Okay. Wait, what is happening? How is it not resetting? Oh, probably because it's yeah, not it has enough the players. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, the okay. We can have some AIs. Ready for more. Yeah. Whoa, I didn't ask for that many. Cassidy. That's so weird, dude. I can't get over that. Okay. Uh, sure. Let's just say hog. Oh, crap. My bad. I'm new with this, this game code as well, but I just recently got it. Wait. What the world? How did we get the hard bots? I guess I didn't, I didn't even realize um, that we had hard bots as well. I'm just, I'm bad right now. All good. Okay. Right, uh, another so another question just came up. Yeah. So for, we're around, a, our average for group rating is around goldish, like 20, 2100 to 2300, something like that. So like, what percentage of against like the your collegiate team do you want us to aim for in terms of skill level and group group uh, it's all, play? 
it's all about where you guys want to get. Like, I, I don't, not going to compare you guys to my collegiate team, right? Like, that's not something that should be done. It's more um, making sure you guys have your own, you know, smooth improvement. Okay. What's, I don't, I don't know why it's not starting, to be honest with you. This is really weird. Um, I think you might need like five, five, I mean, 666. There we go. I think I had to start the game mode. Uh oh. No, because usually it, what, what's nice about this is it's meant to be 3v3. And um, when someone dies, it puts you on different parts of the map. So you can kind of... And it puts you on very specific parts of the map, like start sh like strong strategic parts. Um, I'm going to so copy the camera. Okay. Um, try not to share it with anybody because this was actually done by a tier 3 coach buddy of mine. And he paid like 70 bucks for it, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I really don't want you to give it to anybody other than the team. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't. There's no purpose okay. for me doing that. All right. Well, it could it could really benefit other teams, but like, yeah, don't don't please don't. Yeah, no worries. <clears throat> yeah, I want to see if this works. Cause this shit, we should have already been started already. This is the, this is so weird. I don't understand why this is happening. Like it, doesn't, it, it doesn't have a, yeah, it doesn't have a countdown. So we kill someone, then you should respawn, right? Yeah, like you that's... just respawn in the thing. Kill me! There we go. Yeah, it's not happening. I have no idea why this is not working. Hold on, do I have the right stuff here? Is a code even added? Yeah, that's why I'm like... Hold on. You're I'm kind of dumb. <laughs> I was about to say the code isn't added. I'm kind of dumb. I put it in code mode, dude. Or mode name. I'm stupid. Okay, well, that makes more sense. Um... It's a change, it's a max score, it's a bit of a Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, now we're good. Everybody press F and ready up. I understand. How's the boss supposed to be ready? Uh, I think, okay, hold on. Now that I have it right. Uh, shall I be? Okay. We should be able to all ready up now. Arriving at watch point, Gibraltar. True self is F. Okay. So now you guys are supposed to dive us? With the monkey? Just leave the monkey alone, let him dive. Wait, oh. Yep. So somebody died. Oh, then all of them died? Bot Winston. Yeah, don't leave the bot Winston alone and let him just kind of dive us. But this is meant for not a bot Winston. I'm just giving you guys an example of like what it's supposed oh. to look like. Huh. So when you have an actual player in here, then it could, you know, you guys could practice like 3v3. Oh. Victory. Okay. So that's kind of what it's like. You just have to restart it, obviously, but you kind of get the plan. Mm-hmm. Bot Winston is um not great, but when we got three three players in here, that that'll actually it'll it actually works out really nice. My A team runs this quite a bit.
Wait, what the? He, he just left. Who, the coach? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Probably yeah. DC'd by accident. Yeah, I mean... I think like Overwatch is That's complicated. It. That's yeah. it, and I'm out. <laughs> I mean, do you guys see like how Overwatch is super complicated? Yeah. Yeah. Like when you're playing the ladder, I know Javon plays a lot with his uh, three groups. And then like when you play on the ladder, it's like so different. Everyone's doing their own shit. Sometimes this gets super fucking annoying, but eh, yeah, it's bronze. And then our goal is to aim to plat or try to go above gold. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I know Anthony's skill level is probably there already, so we just have to work on team play and communicating call outs as the coach said, call outs, all tracking oh, and stuff. I just left. Yeah. My bad. Uh, okay. I was looking at you guys as SR. So exalted, you're unranked, right? Yeah, I'm not 25 yet. Okay, and oh, okay, so Terminator as well. Yeah, I don't. So ten that. ten zero is is J. Okay. All right. That's not my main account though. I'll give you my main account in Battle Tag. Uh... Okay, that's right, and I put it in chat. So you play a decent amount of the other characters to Cree, Echo, Doom. Okay. Yeah, I'm a relative. I'm basically like a flex player, so. And you're gold, right, Jack? No, I am uh, 3.6. That's my peak. Oh, I didn't even see where that was. Let's look at that. What, what, um, when was that? You mean what season? Yeah. Uh, Three seasons ago, probably. But right now, I'm playing Diamond around 3.3 to 3.4. I see at 28, you hit 2.5. Oh, you're looking Is at this account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you. Okay. I'm going to show you another account. But I need to find the other account first. So both of you have hit higher. So Jay, what is your what is your peak? Mm, near eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred? Yeah, this is like my first three seasons. I really didn't play comp like that until like this year. I'm confused. You said thirteen hundred, but I'm looking at thirty two hundred right now. Oh, this yeah, is that's, yeah, that's account. one of my accounts. Oh, that makes more sense. That yeah. was confusing me. Okay. Where is the authentic? I can see it. So Jack is the one that you... So you've been... Okay. So we got to play... I mean, this isn't going to be anything against any of you guys, but I like to kind of optimize around people in a, in a way. Like, for example, my A team, we play around Sugu quite a bit and like the, what he plays. So if we can play around um, Jack and what he plays as well, um, that can kind of be, you know, op uh, optimal. Does anybody have him added and just bring him in here? I have uh, the my main account, or my secondary account in the... Battle attack uh, channel. You're gonna make me add a bunch of people here. <laughs> you could, you could remove the one. I, which one? Yeah, you could remove Nezuko. So. Nah, it's okay. It's just that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna leave this though. You can't accept this friend request because. What? All right, yeah, right. Yeah, can you remove uh that that uh friend, or like what's it called? I think I think Nezuko. Yeah, can you remove Nezuko? Then I can add you on the crew. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Do you see me? 
Um, I, I could get on that account right now. Oh, okay. I just have to look at it. What, what's it called again? Sorry. Uh, Zancro. Starts with a Z. Yeah. Z A. I can't look at the. Is it on private? No, I, I can't look at players when I'm in the lobby. Sorry. Oh. Trying to look at other players. Trying to look at players. Uh, what's it start with? Hmm? Oh, Z. Oh. And say the name again, sorry. Zancro. Z A N. Are you on it right now? Yeah, like uh sent you yeah, I saw Oh, there it message. is. Okay. Yeah, I th I did know you're on. Okay, so three six, three four. That was when you played a lot of Echo. Oh no. I have that problem every day. You guys placed this this uh season with me yeah uh on other accounts yes but not on the zinkro account because i need to improve my aim so i mean for projectile like mei and uh, genshi and uh not widowmaker the echo uh, i'm pretty decent but like when i need to switch to his can i just i can't so I'm just practicing aim right now on aim lab and on Overwatch using diamond ranks. Yeah, I mean, improving hit scan is is good if you want to be a hit scan player. It's just like, but if not, then it's not as important. But still, definitely, like I would think tracking is more important if you're gonna play flex than actual like accuracy. If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm more of a flicker, like tracking I can't do, like Zarya and such I can't do. I can I I hit uh 3200 as a Zarya player. And then I switch to DPS, but on DPS I'm more of a flicker. You're more of a clicker? Flick. Oh flicker, flicker. Right, um, I think that's it for today though, uh, unless anybody has any questions, probably gonna head out for the night. Alright, uh, once you, once you find a scrim or something like that, do you mind just, uh, basically messaging everyone using the, like, everyone mentioning? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as long as you give me a time and a day, because, I mean, I, I don't want to dictate when you guys are going to scrim. That's more of an agreement between you guys. Um, and then once you tell me the day, I'll be able to get a scrim for you. That shouldn't be a difficult thing to do. Yeah. So, I mean, as you saw from, like, the chart right there, with a uh, Google Sheet, most of us have time on weekends. And then some of us have uh, a lot of time during the week. So, I mean... You kind of have to sacrifice, so if you don't really have an important thing to do on the week, you could kind of sacrifice it for the scrim. But if you have really, really important things to do, I mean, we understand that, so... Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I, I work uh, 9 to 5 as well at the uh, university in IT, um, as well as, like, coaching the collegiate team, um, as well as, like I said, wife and kids, so... That's really going to kind of take the front seat. Um, and then the collegiate team, then of course you guys are going to be uh, equally as important. 
uh, during this process. It's more just making sure that you guys have a schedule and then I'll try to work into your guys' schedule. So don't really worry about mine because mine is chaotic and crazy. Um, it's more me trying to adjust to you guys. So as long as you have a, a study work flow and what you guys want to do and decide what scrim days you're going to scrim, etc., then we can kind of, I can, I can help work around that. Yeah. So I would just get together with your team, make sure, hey, you know, we have these available times. Are you guys able to scrim? Make sure we confirm it, and then from there, kind of go on. Um, and you know, who who's captain or per se? Has anybody been established captain? Me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that would definitely be a captain's role to get everybody together, make sure we have, um, you know, scrim days. Uh, everybody agrees to it, and then you're good to go from there. Um, how many times you want to scrim just dep depends on how fast you guys want to improve. Um, and that's kind of up to you. This guy's over here playing Valorant. I don't know. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like the person I told you about. Like that's not very dedicated. Like I mean, she said that she wants to. She's studying for the SAT. But I mean, as you, as you saw, she's playing Valorant, so I don't understand what that issue is. Yeah, I need I need to talk with uh, Miss Elon about that, and uh, we'll see from there. Yeah. Um. Is there anybody else that would be willing to take the spot, though? I mean, uh, in our school, as... in our school, Overwatch players are limited. Everyone's mostly playing Valorant and such, but Valorant is such a big group. Yeah, Iris. Yeah, yeah like right, right, Iris can come. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a oh, cool. player that's called Iris, so we can ask her. Yeah, I mean. I can take anybody and make them better. It's just like I said, I need dedicated players to make sure that happens. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, I need to talk with like the board members about uh about the uh, person playing Valorant, and then we'll go from there to see what we can deal with her, and how we can deal with her. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, I will talk to you later. Have a good night. And uh, yeah, we'll meet up. Uh, if you guys can scrim on a Tuesday, there's... Ah, man. I, there's another team that I also coach on those days. Um, I like weekends. I feel like I can help the most on weekends. So I'll probably end up you know, showing up to scrims and or VODs and stuff on the weekends. Um, but if I do have free time among the week, I could definitely pull some of you guys in for like one on ones and stuff like that. Uh, but I just need scrim footage first before we can do that. Um, yeah, I can't definitely. guarantee that I'll that I'll show up to the scrims, but that doesn't matter as much as long as you guys are just practicing in general, and you know taking what I say on the feedback and making sure you're Im implementing it, and you know the captain making sure that you know that you're that the team is in the right mind frame i'll give you all the parts and pieces to make sure that we are playing the right stuff and that we're organized and that we you know we have clear goals that we want to like work towards um but it's kind of your job to keep everybody kind of accountable uh because i, I unfortunately i can't keep everybody accountable this i don't have enough um power i guess you can say like i i'm a guest coach not like the head coach you know what i mean so yeah. i don't want to press press in too many buttons and try to dig my claws in that type of way sounds aggressive but um in, in a way you kind of have to be a, a aggressive in keeping people accountable but i'm not there to do that so yeah um, that's what, yeah. Uh, yeah that's what rohan suggests me to you to do also so me and Miss Elon basically talk every week about how the team's going and then uh, what she can do to help. So, yeah, I'm going to email, or I'm not going to email, but I'm going to Discord DM her right now and then the board members about, you know, like what we're doing and like how we can improve ourselves. And then the players that are not as dedicated, then we can swap them out and things like that. Yeah. Sounds good with that. I just want somebody to learn and be happy to be here and improve and, you know, that'll be that. Um, is your Valorant team in HSEL or? Yeah, every team is right now. Yeah. Okay. So you guys will be next semester, not this semester. 
Yeah, there's a I think a fall tournament, and then I I think the winter one just ended. So the, and then there's a fall one later on. So we're gonna participate in that. Cause we're we just missed fall. If that's the case, then, cause we're we're winter and then it goes into spring. So that's oh. why I'm kind of oh, okay. wondering. Unless you're gonna be added to HSEL, because I believe one of my other teams is competing in HSEL on on Mondays. So that's why I'm just kind of confused. So maybe I'll talk to uh, Miss E or. I don't yeah, know. she's basically like the organizer for all the teams. She's the one that started this, um, I guess, club and which in, re in return is oversees all the the teams. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the next uh... talk to her and then just ask like, hey, what are our plans with like current competition? Or are we in competition? Are going to be in competition? Can you be added to the competition? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um. Just kind of let me know, because I, I, I am a big believer in working towards goals. You know what I mean, and having some type of competition that that you guys can work towards uh, and improve in. I feel yeah. it can be great. I mean, I'll definitely improve you guys. There's no question about that. And if your goal is like spring to get good and co compete, then you know you'll be good enough, and you'll have the correct tools and understanding of what you need to be successful and keep grinding even without me you'll you'll have the exoskeleton of, of improvement i guess you can say and what that kind of looks like on a in a team aspect so i'll definitely leave you guys with that but i i do want six guys or girls doesn't matter uh to be here and be dedicated to that to that goal so yeah, we have an individual a ghost on the Google she I sent you, uh, which says like most of us want to reach plat, and then as a team we want to improve our coordination, communication, team play, such and such. Yep. Yeah. And that'll happen. It, what's nice is it'll happen in scrim, and you'll understand, you know, how to kind of help that happen. But in the VOD, I'll get down to the gritty details of where the connection needs to happen and how it needs to happen. Um, most of it at lower SRs is just like communication issues um, and understanding how we can communicate better to help each other become, you know, better teammates and better players. So, Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, have a good night. I got to head out. All right. Good night. All right. See All you. Right. Thank you. you. See you.